<laughs> Look at that. Oh, lures just popped out. That is a fantastic eating sized pollock. What a stunner! This feels like a nice fish. A very nice fish. Yes! Yes! A lovely cod. Fantastic! Well, oh, we're slopping about a bit, aren't we? There's the lure. Right, well, we have the fish that I caught earlier. We have three nice codlings and a pollock. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to fill them off. Now, I've already... I dispatched and bleed them, and then while I was at sea, I've also gutted them. So all you do is you just open up the belly cavity and just take out the insides. Now you can see how fresh they are, they've still got rigor mortis. Straighten them out a bit. Is it easier when they've got rigor mortis? Depends on the fish. Okay. Some fish are, some fish aren't. Right, first cut going just behind the fin and up towards the head like that. Then straight in, right through, now like that. Right, take them one side off and just turn the fish over and just do the exact same again but switch round. Like I say, you just peel the meat across with your thumb. You're not pulling on it, you're just kind of lifting it across. And then all you do is you just feed the knife in until you hit bones. You see these rib bones here? All I'm doing is by pulling it across, I can get the knife in behind them all. See? And then all you'll do is you'll just run the knife in behind all the way down so it meets up with the backbone and there you go and V-bone All those bones are just in that little piece that I've taken out. Now this here, you can. Uh, I'm going to leave the skin on it for now, and I'm going to skin them all at the same time. But skinning is really easy. All you do is you start at one end, and you just shimmy the knife along. There we are, same as before. I bled them, and I've gutted them. And all I'm going to do now is I'm just going to take off the two fillets just like I've done with the pollock. So up underneath the fin, up towards the head and then in and out. So you can see along the centre there where you're going to run the knife it's going to be this side of the fins. So it's
Then all I'm doing, like I say, you just peel the meat back and just run the knife in along. You can feel that. Sorry, you can't feel it. You can hear it. Hear where it's hit the backbone. Nothing but bones. And just like before, if you work your way up until you hit bones there, switch it over, go into the belly cavity. Like that and there will be a line of ribs and you can see them there they're just underneath this stomach lining here if you miss one you can just nick in behind it just lift it out Did a better job than that, of that than I did of the pollock. Just looking at the fish, you can see there. There's no meat being left behind, just all bone, and you've lost a millimetre as you've got to the belly cavity. Yeah. Same as before. If there's any worms that's going to be in it, it'll be here in this belly. Actually, this one's pretty clean. It hasn't got any worms in it. But there are going to be a couple of little bones just here. And the best way to deal with those is to V-bone it. Just like that. There. And those two little strips there I've got all the bones in. So that fillet now should have no bones, no mess. Right, so you saw me filleting off the cod and the pollock and I have brought them round to Jim's. And I will just, <laughs> I'll just hand you straight over. Uh, jolly good. Oh. Uh, here are the um, superb cod and pollock fillets that uh, you saw John filleting earlier. And I've um, just whipped, taken the skins off, cut them down, and I've got them on a bit of paper drying. and. Um, I've also got some ling from a previous fishing trip of John's and I'm just going to do some goujons and we're going to do a little comparison of cod, pollock and ling. You can't see very much difference can you between the pollock is maybe just a little bit pinker so we have cod, pollock and ling. And besides three fishes we're going to have two batters so 
this is all the ingredients for our chippy tea tonight. I've got some regular plain flour in a dish with some uh, sea salt and a little white pepper and I've used that to coat the fish before battering it. We're going to make a beer batter, plain flour and beer, a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper and John was so enamoured of that very lightly Indian seasoned batter uh, that I did last time. I'm going to use a bit of cumin and some ground turmeric. A little bit of ground pepper uh, in there. I will say it's, um, we've done quite a few cooking videos before with Jim, but that one, that that cod video that we did before, that's the one that I've been fantasizing about the most. Every single time I go back and answer some comments on that video, I still think mm, that was delicious yeah. because it was absolutely amazing. The crackle of the batter was something else, wasn't it? We've moved out onto the deck to use the fryer, mainly because Carol won't allow us to use it inside. <laughs> so I've got my classic. Uh, yeah, someone decker, someone mentioned that in a video, didn't they? And my lovely 1999 deep fat fryer. Sorry, other fryers are, are available. At <laughs> higher or prices, if they're any cheaper, don't bother. Uh, John brought over a bag of uh, red rooster potatoes, which I peeled, to cut into reasonable sized chips. And um, we're going to got the fryer set to 150. And that's sunflower oil, isn't it? Yeah, I, I like to fry with sunflower oil. Um, the basket's just half full. I would have said half full as well. The other people would say half empty, wouldn't they? Well, the, whatever. It's but the, the, opti the, the optimist the in you. The point is, yeah. don't overfill the basket. Yeah. One, it drops the temperature far too much and the chips begin to soak up the oil and also you can see that bubbling away uh, madly too much in the basket it will be all over do you agitate feet. them so they don't stick together is that why you do it could be or it could just be unnecessary fussing <laughs> so let's go back in right um just open a bag of regular plain flour and i'm just going to go freehand with the flour and we'll put some, this will be the beer batter. So that was a little bit of ground white pepper, a little bit of ground black pepper because I like the two. This is very finely ground sea salt. So I put in a little bit extra and a bottle of Doom Bar. You can use others, can't you? You can use pale you can, ales, you can, you can use non-alcoholics use if you don't want it to. Beer if you're, if, not something I would usually use in a batter, uh, but it seems to be very on trend now. So we'll start with a bit, because you can always add more. Just a regular whisk. There we go. Another good swallow. Ah, there, the lumps have gone. I haven't put any... Uh, more beer or anything, but that's the sort of consistency you want. If I get a spoon, no. it just coats the spoon. Now we'll leave that to rest. Let the gluten relax. Jug of cold water, which I've had in the fridge. <coughs> I'm going to make a bit more of it because I think it will be the most popular. So again, I'm going to put a little more white pepper in just for a bit of heat. A little bit of black, ground black for the seasoning. About half a, not even that, a third of a teaspoon. <coughs> About uh, two tabs. Uh, some cumin. Uh, got my tad measure, two tads, which would of course, for those in the know, would be six nats. And a turmeric. Uh, this is a. You know now I'm going to be getting comments <coughs> asking about. Yeah, this is 
not too much because turmeric can have quite a <coughs> unpleasant bad taste but it's much used in pubs and restaurants because it gives the batter a deeper yellow colour and of course turmeric is purported to be very good for you uh, sorry just need my whisk back that batter will be the look like your sunny rosy face <laughs> whilst we've been making the batters these are finished cooking nice and soft put them into this saucepan uh, hold and they will have to go back into uh, hotter oil to finish cooking again not too many and then as we lower it in just keep your hand on the handle and then if, the, if it froths too alarmingly you can always lift it and stop the process if you need it but that's going to be okay we're just finishing off the last load of chips we have got the batters resting you can see the colour difference in them now can't you and Jimmy's making what you're making a homemade some tartar sauce so I've got uh, um, mayonnaise I'm just using this jar to uh, mix it up in say a bit of washing up that's all I've got some capers oh the smell it there we go oh, so they're not they're not diced they're or not chopped or anything but, uh, almost just half just enter that working don't like capers leave them out if you don't like gherkins leave them out finely diced gherkin add that into the jar and I'm just going to take a break there to lift the last of the chips right back to the tartar sauce just a handful of uh, curly leaf parsley or you could use flat I'm, I'm glad you said that because my question was going to be what's the difference between your curly and your flat? Uh, just the way it a, looks. The way it looks and there is a difference in taste. It's, I'm just going to squeeze some lemon in there. Just a little seasoning. A little bit of black pepper. Yeah. Perfect. Right, it's t t time to batter some fish. So, I've got two relatively thick pieces of cod fillet, which I've passed through seasoned flour, and this is the beer butter. Batter. And yep. How are you going to get it out? John, I hope. Uh, John has just reminded me his favourite with that slight spiced batter is a mango chutney mayonnaise. So we've got a couple of heap spoonfuls of mayo. Just two heap spoons of mango chutney. Mm. It did add a wonderful, um, just like a wonderful different flavour to it. Mm. Yeah. I'm sorry. But, uh, we're doing all the frying outside just because of the smell. Now, I'm not going to have enough light to be able to do all the videoing soon, but all we're doing is we have the cod, the pollock, and the ling, and they're being floured and then into either the beer batter. Or the flavoured butter. And the chips have already been through once, so I'm just putting them on a second time just to finish them off. Take off the oil onto some kitchen paper. Let's go in. Because there are so many of us tonight, 
we are all going to be able to sit down at the same time because the fryer is only big enough to really do a couple of people at the same time. So Hannah and I are going to sit down and we we're have two sittings. We're going to be having many sittings, I'm hoping. <laughs> we have got the cord in the beer batter with uh, twice cooked chips, homemade tartar sauce with a mango chutney mayonnaise. And have you just burnt yourself? No, I'm just <laughs> get stuck in. Here I've got a piece of the pollock cooked in the flavoured batter and some of the cod and you can see there there's no real difference between them is there? Just nice white flaky meat. The difference you can see is in the colour of the batter. Mixed with the homemade tartar sauce and the mango chutney mayonnaise it is absolutely delicious. And here we have our best boy enjoying your fish and chips. Good work. Can't just eat the batter though. I have a bit of fish. <laughs> yes. Good lad. Is it good? Yeah. Good, good job. There we are, that's the finished article. Pollock in flavoured batter, cord in beer batter, and ling strips in flavoured batter with homemade tartar sauce, mango chutney and mayonnaise, and chips. Delicious. Well, I am absolutely stuffed. Just enough space though for Carol's now world famous. This is a giant pavlova. And James, what are you eating? Pancakes. <gasps> pancakes. Pavlova and pancakes. Indeed. Perfect. Well, there is the pavlova, almost finished. It was a really big one, so we didn't finish it all. Uh, you enjoyed it, didn't you, James? What did you like the best? Pancakes. 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 No, Pollock, ling, cod, both in beer batter, and the other one was cumin and turmeric. Yes. All absolutely delicious. So thank yeah. you very much, Jim. Incredible. Liked it. I hope you enjoyed joining us. All the very best. And what do we say, James? Bye from the fish locker. Bye bye.